the forward consulting. deserve the exact same story, but the chapter they're in is actually terrible. With an increasingly high mortality rate among them, children are battling for their lives. We need to bring them superheroes, and we're here to do so. We are Ali, Claudia, Simon, and I, Frédéric, and together we form Forward Consulting Group. So, our mandate for today is to find a viable long-term business model that will enter the exportation of low-cost disposable diapers. Our objectives are therefore to ensure the supply and production of low-cost diapers and the optimal capital inflow to be able to set low price for Venezuelan families. And finally, ensure positioning in the market and a price set strategy that is sustainable in the long run. So our strategy, mobilize business world superheroes to make children's lives story a long and happy one. We're going to quickly go through the analysis, strategy, implementation, and impacts of our strategy. In order to build a strong, viable business model, we need to address two strategic questions. First of all, how to ensure a viable distribution strategy in Venezuela? Well, we have three alternatives here. Government, health institutions, and consumers. Basically, how are you going to sell, and who do you want to, to target? Government, well, currently, they have political issues, and unfortunately, they're corrupt. Um, health institution, well, they're overwhelmed with the political crisis, so it's going to be pretty tough to, t uh, to take them. Consumers, we want you to target the end consumer. So in which channel should you address? Here, we did a business matrix with four key metrics. Um, com consumer preferences, politics, coherence with Max and your strategy, and the ease of implementation. First, we thought about e-commerce. But e-commerce, you need a viable uh, internet connection, and unfortunately, they don't have this there. Then, we thought about importing raw materials and producing locally. But it's difficult to import raw materials. A lot of companies are facing that challenge. And uh, there's always the risk that you can get nationalized your, your own company. So this leads us to our third to our third alternative, which is direct export. Why? It's reliable, it's fast, and it suits your strategy. So again, another question that we need to ask. Where to produce these goods? Where to ship them from? Four alternatives here. Venezuela, Latin America, Asia, North America. Venezuela, we, as we said, is pretty uh, difficult to, uh, to import that. Latin America, it's a feasible one. Asia, there's a high transport cost and the logistic cost for that. And North America, there's a lot of political uh, tensions and US sanctions, so we want to hedge that. and. We, this is why we want to, you to uh, export from Latin America. So now, now that we have a strategic model, how to finance all that? Four alternatives here, governments, alliance, foundation, foreign health. Government, it's pretty difficult to challenge that. Foreign health, the, currently the government is refusing any help from the UN, from all other um, institution, institutional, uh, institutional uh, uh, groups. So this leaves us with alliance and foundation. So for the alliance, wanted to make it a partnership between business. So you, it can reduce logistic costs, reduce the, uh, reduce the risk. And for the foundation, we want to complement that in, uh, in by building and supporting uh, the logistics, but also anywhere from uh, around the world, they're able to uh, give donations to that foundation. For our strategy, all to close the chapter on an international crisis. Our strategy is simple. We want to strategy form a business world superhero alliance and build a foundation to make children live happy and long life. So how are we gonna do it? Uh, we wanna create a business superhero league. Why are we gonna do it? It's simple, to ensure production and supply of low cost diapers. How are we gonna? So to build this strategy is simple. 
And why we want to do it is to ensure uh, low cost diapers. But who's going to be the partner in this audience? There's two main problems currently on the Venezuelan market. There's volume, as there's a lot of shortage of supplies, and there's prices. We know that only wealthy family can offer diapers currently, and that's a problem we want to tackle. So we're going to have a super real that will provide cost, price, or low cost, or even below uh, cost price diapers, something that will bring in interest, and businesses, businesses that will be a part of the diapers price. It's simple. Every strong alliance need ally interests. So to do so, we want our suppliers to have access to a new market and to really leverage their capacity that is not used currently. To do so, they will have fiscal incentive and they will build a brand around it. We know that you have strong value and the foundation will have a global entity that is bringing a mission to the world. Really save children from Venezuela. So we really want companies to, uh, to round up around this. On the other side, we know that Knights in China Armor, so our businesses that will be a part of it. Our businesses are CPG's business and kids related business. Why? Because they're the business that will gain the most of this new strategy and that will gain the most from co consumer spending. So we want to build a strong brand that will last even after the crisis. We also want to leverage a logistic partner. So our alliance partner that will be in the alliance, the businesses, will have access to your logistic expertise and to other partners to be sure that they leverage other shipment from other companies to ensure supplies and lower the cost of, flip of supplies. Something that will have real incentive and real benefits to every company. Also, we know that tax deductible will be something that will be interesting for those companies. So every strong alliance have a strong economic model. So we want to ensure the long-term viability of this model. All. We know that you're gonna buy diapers, and on the long term, you could also buy other milk or other shortage product to low-cost provider. Low-cost provider that will have an advertised incentive. They will be able to really make revenue in domestic countries, but also in foreign countries on the mission of, that we are providing. Something that will drive them to supply Venezuelan market and something that will have a direct impact on Venezuelan families. As they will have more supply, price will be lower and less uh, shortage. Something that will lead to, sorry, something that will lead to kids to have better future. How? Because health benefit, uh, we know that infantry uh, market rate is a difficult uh, problem and we want to tackle it with this. And we know also that families are spending a lot of hours in stores to wait for diapers, something that is bringing no value to the family and no value to the society. So as they will have more time, disposable income will increase as well, something that will have a direct effect on local businesses and on the economy. Something that will ensure that everybody is winning in the strategies and that interests are aligned. So every strong alliance have strong partner. We identified some strong partner that could be interesting. So on the supply side, supply side sorry, we have Johnson & Johnson, PNG, and others. And on the other side, so businesses, we have uh, PNG's companies and kids related companies. So what we need to remember is that to create a virtual circle, where suppliers, CPGs, and Maxianet is winning, we need to thrive as superheroes. Thank you, Simon. So on to chapter two of our strategy is really to build the first step foundation. So you may ask, why build a foundation? First, because you're gonna gain as a company legitimacy, which means you're gonna increase your reputation because you're helping a good cause, and also you're gonna set a clear border between your business activities and your philanthropic activities. Um, for the second aspect is that you're going to attract more capital inflow because donations will be uh, received uh, well, from individuals and also uh, businesses. Finally, there is fiscal benefits for, for uh, all stakeholders, so for you, Max Dennis, with the tax benefits and tax reduction when you donate as a donator. So now, uh, how to attract media attention? This is major. We're going to do an awareness uh, video campaign that is really showcasing how mothers struggle to find diapers and resources for their, their babies. And then we're going to really retain media attention to make sure the, fu the foundation stays on the long run with content creation and a true life uh, story. So 
Now we have media coverage attention. We're going to leverage it to create legitimacy, capital inflow, and ca uh, fiscal benefit for stakeholders from this foundation. So our positioning for MaxDanet is to really position the company as uh, the company who democratizes the access to diverse, setting really low cost for Venezuelan families, which means that we have contribution from the Alliance and Foundation and also uh, a, a small amount that is paid from the consumer. Now that we know the why, the how, and the when, let's focus more on the financial impact of this strategy. So every strategy has assumptions and deductions. Here, I want to point out one very important uh, assumption, which was stated yesterday from The Economist, which is the growth rate of toddlers from 2020 to 2025. There's an increase of 5.66%, and this is what we want you to capitalize on. Again, I'm coming back to the first one, the maxi-net distributor margin. I want you to start with 5%, and then you can leverage it to 7%. Currently, as the market stated, it's between consumer goods is 3% to 10%, but we believe that 5% to begin with is a viable, uh, viable alternative for you. Diaper for child, um, again from Euromonitor, uh, in Venezuela, it's one, uh, 126 diapers per, uh, per year, and we know that this will increase as our economic model can increase and we'll have more uh, money to inject that. The average cost of a single diaper from all the suppliers that uh, we saw, the average one, the unit price is 20 cents. Um, some of them 14, some of them 21, but we believe that 20 cents is, is a good one. Contribution from Alliance and Foundation. So 50% comes from the Foundation and the Alliance, and the other 50% comes from um, the consumers. So we don't want to donate them, we want to uh, ensure a 50-50 balance sheet. So implied values, we believe that you can uh, achieve 18 million for the next five years. Um, and when we discount these cash flows, uh, we you can gain up to 11.14 as a net present value for the whole project. So revenues go up, compounded annual growth rate of 34.02% for the next five years. So every, stra every strategy has cost. Here, we think you need to inject 1.92 million. Very briefly, we want an experienced sales manager uh, in, into Venezuela because there's a big dilemma there and we want to ensure that everything's going to be okay. Four S incidents with him to ensure that everything's going to be all right and uh, there's the black market gap will uh, diminish. And IT integration, here we don't know your IT capabilities. We went to we went with a very conservative one for because it's a cost is very high. So 600K, but we believe that this, this cost will be much lower because we already have the capabilities of an IT system for supply chain management and even if you want to work with partners. So here, we use the sensitivity analysis. Very briefly, we use two, two different variables. On my uh, vertical axis is your margin, profit margin, and on the uh, ax axis, uh, axis, which is the horizontal axis, it's uh, the unit price of diapers. So as we can see, even if you sell a diaper for 12 cents and you only get a profit margin of 1%, you're still gonna make some money, which is a, a quarter of a million. But the upside is huge. If you sell your diapers for 60 cents at the unit price and you get a 12% margin, it's 88 million. That's, you bear risk, but the risk is huge, but still the upside is very much, very high. So we thought about uh, three different risks for a strategy. I just want to focus more on the, late, the, late, the latest point, which is if retailers can't pay US dollars because they don't have US dollars, they only have Venezuelan dollar bars. Um, for which to mitigate that is really hedging with forward contracts that can help really to deal with the uh, currency fluctuation in the long term. Uh, there's also the lack of funding and uh, that we can mitigate through diversifying our partners and really focus on their social uh, responsibility as well as relying, if we rely too much on partners, um, it's really to leverage the risk that we're taking from them and um, having long term benefits too. There's three key indi indicator performance. The first one is the Venezuelan diaper market share. Uh, we believe that in the next five years, it can go up to 41%, which represents the same uh, market share that um, uh, Kimberly Clark used to have and now they're not going to get back that. There's also the amount of donation collected through the foundation, which will be roughly $9 million. And the sales through the alliance partners will be roughly $19 million. Yeah, 18 million. So as of tomorrow, we, we did a timeline about roughly five years. Uh, the first one, the first part we're going to focus on 
setting up the foundation and completed the partner that will ship the diapers to Venezuela. And then uh, one year from now, it's really going to be launched to Venezuela markets, really uh, penetrating the market. And in the next five years, it's going to be, um, after five years, it's going to be focusing to really have different partners to uh, diversify their product offerings. Thank you. So now that we made sure that kids have superheroes to look up to and have the foundation to take the first step into the right direction, we can really be sure that the next chapter of Venezuela story will be a better one. We're Forward Consulting, and we look forward to your questions. Thank you. So diapers is really the first step. So we know that is your current focus, and we really want a or add a tailored solution for diapers. However, we see a lot of synergies and a lot of futures to other shortage products, as uh, powder mills and other shortage products. We know that there's a lot of them in the Venezuelan market currently. So it's more like the next steps than the current strategy, uh, but we know that our strategy is scalable on other products. And then uh, clarify for me, so when you reference the foundation, yes. is your recommendation that Maxianet would create its own foundation or work with other partners? It's really to put the name of Maxianet uh, as the leader of the foundation. It's really to uh, raise brand reputation, so we're gonna be the one who's setting up the foundation, but it's not taking your name because, it's your name because um, it, it's really to put forward the, the, the purpose of the whole foundation, which is to give uh, the first step to children to, towards a better life. Okay. And that would all be focused on Venezuela specifically? Yes, Got it. tailored for the market. Got it. Uh, you recommended a 36 diaper pack, 36 unit diaper pack. Mm -hmm. um, was there a specific reason for the 36 pack? Uh, we know the different uh, size that can be produced up to 50 or 80 or even like smaller packs. But the thing is that we noticed that in the market, one of the main uh, issues is that they had to wait a long line and it was a lot of time to be able to get those basic need resources. So our aim is to find a medium pack that is a 36 in order to be able to be, uh, to, um, to uh, sustain, accessible. exactly, and uh, sustain the needs for a short period of time instead of going each week into the, the, the stores. Uh, and then the alliance partner. What would the alliance, define for me the alliance partner. Uh, I think I might have lost you at the beginning a little bit. Was the alliance partner specifically a business individual? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so there's two types of uh, uh, partners. So we know that we will have superheroes uh, partners that are for the suppliers. So you need a supplier for the diapers. Okay. So we're, we talked to Johnson & Johnson, Unilever, Kimberly Clark. On the other side, we know that there's businesses that are in Venezuela and that will require the benefit of this strategy and the branding and other uh, fiscal and uh, advantages. So we really want to have those partners in the alliance to pay a, a cut or a part of the diapers price and to uh, really brand themselves around a strong partnership that will have a stand and that will be recognized around Venezuela. Okay, so the suppliers you're recommending is part of your recommendation, or is this just by example, of these would be you know, your recommendations as potential suppliers, or is this just a, a illustrative? It's more illustrative. Fact. However, the best uh, suppliers, uh, according to us, will be Johnson & Johnson. Uh, they are not currently on the market, and they have all of those products. So we think, and they have also a foundation. So we think that it is the kind of company that will be interested. Okay. And they would, we would, purchase diapers from them in this scenario? Yeah. Uh, because you mentioned the 50-50 right, percentage, which, which was very interesting. Um, but we would purchase the diapers from J&J? &J, mm -hmm. to, yes, to ensure that they have tax deductible and they have incentive to be in this model, we want them help to sell to us, uh, to you, sorry, uh, to a low cost price. So it could be below uh, cost price, it could be at the cost price, or it could be with a small premium. So they may be donating themselves mm -hmm. in for them, right? Exactly, yes. Okay with the unused capacity. Okay. And 
did you have the opportunity to identify potential philanthropic or other corporate funds? Is, you mentioned these here. Is that part of the 50-50 in terms of where the funds would come from? So there are organizations that work also as a, a fund uh, raising as well because we want to mostly target for individuals because of the videos of raising awareness and all. We really aim to uh, have a campaign that will globally attract individual, uh, it may be uh, philanthropic, uh, philanthropic people, but also business people and others that are touched by the situation. So, we so that goes through the foundation? Exactly, and exactly. It's okay. just n not only to focus on corporate um, uh, sponsors. Exactly, and have individual as well. Okay. And, and is there a, a timeline? Did you address the timeline in terms of what that would look like? Sure. We have a very big I don't okay. know. <laughs> <laughs> I also need a million dollars. Do you have that? <laughs> <laughs> we'll work on it. Yes, that's uh, that's our big plan. <laughs> So it's mostly uh, in the next five years. Mm -hmm. Then after five years, we'll be diversity the product differently. But before that, it's still focusing on diverse in the Indonesian labor market. Um, so the alliance part and the foundation part, most of that will be done in the first year because after the first year, you're, like, you're actually going into the Indonesian labor market. Um, so the, the first part here is really establish the vision with your partners, uh, making sure you have the right partner that you're ready to get involved with projects and everything. There's also a funding distribution and logistics. So even though you, that's your specialty, you still need to have funds to plan it to make sure about that. There's also um, monet at the very end, so after the launch there, there's monitoring and adapting it's a really uh, risky market and there's a lot of stuff that can happen. It's not really a stable market, so you have to make sure that you can adapt to the risk. Yeah, yeah, whatever yeah. that's gonna happen. Um, and then two years from now, it's really finding other CPG partners that will help not to deliver diapers, but to collaborate with the project with the business partners uh, of the one. I think it was you that you commented, thank you. I think it was you that commented on the technology piece, am I correct? Yeah. Uh, on the technology piece, can you put a $600,000 price tag yes, in there? Yes, the IT. What is the IT or the technology, like why did you include that in there? What is it that you're envisioning? Basically, um, organizing the inventory because, uh, as we uh, as we, we showed here, it was uh, the Latin America market because it's close to ship uh, diapers. So you need to control these. Uh, you have the expertise. We don't know, uh, let's say, um, the technology um, tool that you, you use, but it, it's to know, like let's say Johnson and Johnson, how much they they are willing to ship uh, to Venezuela. So you can control because you know sometimes you're gonna have a lot of inventory, sometimes you're gonna have a shortage. So you can control, and we don't we try to avoid a bull whip effect. So very few, very uh, a lot. So this is why we try to uh, mitigate, let's say, that risk by this IT. And as as uh, as here we showed, it's 600, which is huge. But I think uh, you may have a technology similar to that because you work in logistics. So, yeah. so we just need to leverage that in order to inform exactly. our decisions because there's yeah. a lot of vol volatility. Exactly. Try, exactly. Try to avoid volatility. Got it. Okay. Um, final uh, thoughts, uh, feedback, uh, Yeah, I'll take it. So um, I would rate your guys' presentation as fair. Um, the reason why I'm saying that is because uh, I thought you did a really, you started off, Simon started off really strong by saying the alternative options. And I think that's a really interesting approach as to why you went down a certain path. But I felt like the real details didn't come to the very last part of the conversation. And then when Summer started asking pointed questions, it was somewhat hard to understand where you guys were going with this. I felt like you started with too broad. You should have got a little more detail and focus on the initiatives. Um, I, it was a little bit hard to follow exactly where you guys were going with this. So um, I would suggest, you know, identifying, you know, you're saying you develop relationships, but how do you develop those relationships? Get more specific. Don't get too in the weeds on, on broader concepts. Get more focused so that by the time you finish your presentation, you don't have to ask the questions that some are asked. Thank you. Oh, and, and we realize as well there's a timer screen, right? <laughs> so I think you guys were pulling a lot of like details. You were getting to the solution, but I would echo that that was one of my comments was getting some of the specific recommendations. You know, you have 
a management consulting firm coming to pitch you. You're looking for like, what are we actually executing on here? Um, funny enough to me, this is a validating point. I also, one of my first steps was, I actually liked how you very quickly at the beginning kind of substantiated some of the options that were out there and that this is why, but you didn't spend, that you didn't pursue it, but you didn't spend too much time on it because from a customer perspective, if all of a sudden I was like, oh, but that really strikes my interest, well, then as a management consulting firm, you're like, well, we can also do that for you and we can evaluate that, right? So it opens up that opportunity to get a sale in there if you didn't, if you missed it. So um, that was nice, but it needed to, it needed to get a little bit farther in the school development, right? But overall, again, you did a nice job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nice job. Thank you very much. Good job. Thank you. Good job. It's hard with the time restraint. Thank you.